All right, typography in Illustrator. So let's zoom on in on our first challenge here. First thing you should understand about typography in Illustrator is there are two kinds of type. There's point type and there's area type. To explain, if I were to grab the type tool and just click, that is going to be point type. And the way you can tell is that if you were to select it with any of your selection tools, you're gonna see a tiny little dot and that's the point, okay? That is also the reference point for all of the fun stuff and properties like where it is in space, okay? And it is also the anchor for all of your alignment options. So if you wanted it centered or right aligned, you can see the point doesn't move. Okay, this is great for things like logos, not great for things like paragraphs. For that, you're gonna use area type. Same tool, but instead of just clicking, you're gonna drag to create a text box area. And you can see that if I were to change the size, it is going to be contained inside that rectangle I initially dragged. Okay, with that, one of the more fun things we do in typography is choose the typeface. In sort of, uh, I don't know, the vernacular of society, everyone just calls it fonts, uh, but you should know that a typeface is what you look at and the font is what you use. Okay, having said that, uh, just so we're on the same page, we're gonna call this a font and this a font, it's okay. So if I were to go and grab the type tool and select over, let's say the word type, you could see that I have the character panel here right, with some typography options, I also have it here. I can even right click and get to those same options. Okay, to change the typeface or font, you can see that I could go to wherever it says the name of that font, right, and I can slide on through and pick one. Okay, great. If I wanted to grab, let's say the word face here, I happen to know that Myriad Pro has different family members. That's what these guys are called. When you have options like light or bold or black, which is bolder than bold, and or other options for that particular typeface or font, okay? So that's how you select from different typefaces. To colorize text, you can just select it as a group and you could do things globally, right? You can change the colors there. Again, I'm in the Essentials Classic mode. That's why I'm seeing color options up here. But if you wanted to do it in properties, it's exactly the same, okay? Now, if I did want to add a stroke to this, you could see I can click on Stroke and it would apply the stroke. But what if I wanted to have a particular letter, a different color? Well, you can do that with the Type tool. You could select, let's say, the C here and we could make the C a different color, right? We could also make it a different stroke, right? Or we could have no stroke. So you have all sorts of colorizing possibilities. To scale text, you want to be very careful about doing this. You probably want to avoid using the black arrow and just gripping it and ripping it. If there's one red flag in graphic design, it is squishing and stretching text. It just looks unprofessional. So if you do find yourself using the black arrow to scale text, please make sure to hold down shift to lock the proportions. A better way to do it is probably using the character panel where we can actually know exactly how many pixels or points um, that particular font is. I'm in pixels right now, but you should know that type is typically measured in points, and a point is 1 72nd of an inch. Now, when I say that, it doesn't mean that this, let's say, would be an inch if it was 72 point. It means that the highest point in that set of characters for that font, and the lowest point in that set of characters for that font, that distance would be 1 inch at 72 points. Okay, more on that later. 
All right, uh, when you've got bad kerning, that's the spacing between letters, uh, it looks like it's chemming, right? So we want to fix that. So I'm going to go to the type tool. And I'm going to click right between the R and the N. And you can see that over here in the character panel, I have in addition to things like the font and the family member and the size, just below that, I have the kerning. And you can see that if I were to click these arrows, right, it's going bigger and smaller. I'm going to recommend you use the wheel on your mouse or slide with like a two finger slide if you're on a trackpad. Okay. And you can see that that's far more legible. You do have the ability to tighten up letters as well, right? I could say, hey, that's too much space. And in general, we want to have the same rhythm between the letters so we are absolutely sure that this word goes together and it feels like it's balanced. Okay. Now, speaking of spacing, spacing of all the letters is not kerning, it's tracking. And you can see my tracking here is really tight, right? It's really squished together. So what I would want to do is either maybe go with some of these values, or if there's a very specific amount of space you want, you could see that you can slide it back and forth. Okay. Moving on up to vertical spacing. Not leading, but leading. So leading uh, comes from back in the day where they would actually stick strips of lead between the movable type. Okay, so how do I spread this out so we can read this? Well, we've got our size, we've got our kerning, we've got our tracking, and we've got leading. Now notice that the top line stays anchored and the bottom one moves, okay? Um, if you had a whole bunch of lines of text, you could also select that text and you could do it this way. Okay. And in general, you'll see rules out there like it should be 110% of the font size, things like that. But there's also an auto option here. Okay. Which is potentially really helpful. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. Okay. Alignment. So if you do have point type, you can center, left, or right a line, or even do justified text. If I go to paragraph, you can see that by clicking that, that little point never moves, right? The one right there. But the text will align differently, whether it's right align or left aligned or centered, to that point. Okay. Oftentimes, you're going to want to create a different sort of... I don't know, typeface. Like, let's say you want the L to be a little taller, or you wanted to change that T, or any number of things you would want to do to customize your font. Well, one really helpful thing we can do is we can right click and say create outlines. This has now vectorized this text. It is no longer editable. I cannot fix any spelling errors. I'd have to retype that. So there's a trade off here. But you can see that I could go in there and grab, let's say, these two anchor points. And if I really wanted to make this a different shape, right, I can do that now. Or if I wanted to change that, you can basically create a little bit of customized text. The other thing this is used for is when you're doing handoff to a printer or another designer and they don't have that font and all the text layout is dialed in, you could outline your text and it's no longer type that could be maybe swapped to some default by accident, right? It preserves the look and feel of your design and no one's, you know, other computer is going to replace all your text. Okay. Just a little bit on layouts. There are a couple of these that can be a little bit tricky. So if I were to go and look at this first one, let's say for kind of a standard logo with two levels here. You can see that when I click and let's say I type in logo and we could grab the black arrow and just slide it over. That's fine. And we could grab some bold text, right? I have a couple of options. I could just type in a new layer of text. There's no shame in that. That's fine. You could also Right, you could go into the type tool and if I hit return, 
right? I've got my next layer. So if I do type in layout here, you can see it's going to get a little bit crazy. So how do I fix that? Well, we're going to review some of the things we just did to make it look the same. So I could go in there and say, I actually want something a little thinner. Maybe we'll go regular this time. I could change the size, right? I could change the letting, and I could change the tracking. Okay, and that looks more interesting than having everything at the same sort of emphasis, right? And again, I could have done that as two text objects. All right, so the same thing happening here, just showing you that logos oftentimes are aligned either vertically or horizontally, and different companies might use both. One of the more challenging things that we might do with a logo layout is this guy here. And to do that, you actually are going to use a third type of type. And that is point, not point, it is type along a path. Okay. So if I go ahead and make a circle, I can do type along a path. If I grab type along a path, so I'm holding the left mouse button down, and I go to type along a path, and I just click, you can see that I'm immediately getting text on that path. Now, that's okay, but you can see there's a lot we need to fix here. So let's fix some things like not make the tracking so huge, and we can replace the text since it's all selected. So I'm going to type in logo type. All right. And it looks like it's probably bold here. It's going to look a little better. But there's all sorts of other funky things going on here. I would love to rotate the text. OK, so let's do that. So I can get to the black arrow. And there's a couple of ways we could do it. This little funky T thing, this is like a shuttle jog. This will allow me to move it forward and backward. It also allows me to drag it on the inside, which I don't want for now. So I could do it that way. I could also have rotated the entire object. OK. But the big difficulty is going to be, how do I get this to be centered on the middle of this circle? OK. That is a hidden feature inside the Type Along the Path tool. So if I double click this, aha, you can see that right now I'm aligning to the baseline. I want to align to the center. And when I do that, ah, it's aligned to the center. And this solves a big problem, which is how am I going to make this text not upside down if I were to keep typing? OK. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to just copy this text, right? And I want to copy and paste it right on top of itself. So that's going to be Command or Control C, depending if you have a PC or Mac, and then Command or Control F. Now, what I have are two of the same text objects, but you can see the problem. This one is upside down. But you might have noticed that back at the ranch here with my type along a path tool, if I double click on it, I can flip it. When I flip it, you can see that, aha, that text is now upright. And because it's the same text, it's on the same path. And that solves that problem. OK. So this is essentially the same as this, just showing a different orientation. Um, but there you go. That is most of what you need to know about typography in Illustrator.